What's up guys, Gearaholic here. I'm here with another review. Uh, we're going to be doing the review today on the Mora Companion. Uh, this is my Mora Companion, and uh, basically the knife itself, uh, you know, comes, uh, it, I, got, I think I got this knife uh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, since I've had this knife, I've done a lot of damage to it. I've had a lot of fun with it. It's, uh, one, of my, it's one of my more favorite knives. It's actually my primary, I call it my primary bushcraft knife. And I mean, really, it, it I think that um, says a lot about a knife when you make it your primary bushcraft knife. And I know a lot of you guys are probably cringing out there, or some of you guys are cringing out there because it's like, oh, primary bushcraft knife, Amora? No. Well, you know, I have my I have my my pros and my cons about obviously certain knives. Um, I'm kind of one of those guys that if you're going to do a task, uh, you need to use the right tool for the right job. Uh, so if I'm going to baton with wood or anything. Uh, you know, with this thing, it's it's because I know that it can take a certain amount of batoning. Uh, you know, if I need to process wood, I'll bring an axe. There's my thoughts on it. Um, so, you know, in, in my in my honest viewpoint, this is a great bushcraft knife because you can't you can't damage it if you're doing the right techniques with it and you're treating it and you know that it has uh, you know limitations. So that being said, and that kind of out of the way. Uh, how can I go into the knife? Uh, the specifications on the knife. Uh, I don't have all the specifications uh, because I honestly, it's not that big of a deal to me. Um, here, oh sorry, let me uh, let me kind of put it back in the sheath. So basically, it comes with this sheath. Um, you know, it's the it's this polypropylene sheath, and uh, basically the sheath is, uh, it, you know, it works. It's decent. It's not a bad sheath. It it just isn't the perfect sheath. Um, I did a little bit of a modification on mine. Uh, where I added a I added a ranger band, which is simply just a, a bike inner tube or a section of bike inner tube, um, and then a and then I I tapped a hole into the handle uh, and I ran a lanyard obviously down and around uh, the actual nodule right here, and this nodule uh, is actually used to piggyback another mora uh, using this same setup right here, which is a little snap in uh, hook closure type deal, and it kind of swivels. Um, I honestly feel like I like this here. A lot of people are like, I don't know why they put it on there. I don't know why you'd ever piggyback a knife. I don't know why either, but honestly, it makes great. It makes a great little catch um, for a lanyard hole. Uh, so it, and it keeps your knife really, I mean, really in there, which is fine. And then I added, you know, when I added the bike inner tube, it just is added added protection against the knife falling out when I'm doing outdoor activities or anything. Uh, and then it's really simple, you know, you just pop that up and you pull it over. Oh, I say pull it over. Uh, and then it kind of pops that little rubber band off and then I just pull the whole knife out. So the sheath, it's not bad. It could, there's, there could be a better sheath out there. And I haven't had the time to really go look online to go get like a nice Kydex sheath or anything uh, for my knife. But it works, uh, it works for, uh, you know, what it is. Uh, let's kind of move on. So the actual knife itself, uh, the knife itself is right around the nine inch, uh, the nine inch mark, which is great because it's a perfect size knife for backpacking or if you're doing, uh, uh, if you're doing a lightweight travel, um, you know, and, and you want to keep, you want to keep the ounces down. It's, it's, it's lightweight, but for as long as it is, it doesn't weigh that much. I want to say that it's four. I've seen on some, some, uh, some websites it says 4.2 and then other people say it's 4.5. So it's somewhere, I guess, between those ounce that ounce range um, of the of the four the the four and a half uh, ounce mark, which to me doesn't really matter how much it weighs as long as it doesn't weigh a pound. You know what I mean? So really, I mean, this knife. I mean, for what you're paying uh, for it, and 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 how much you're getting from 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 bottom to top, it's it's a lot of knife. And and really, uh, in my opinion, I think I paid fifteen dollars online for this knife. Back when I first got it, and it's a lot. It's a lot of knife for for fifteen dollars, uh, and really, uh, this knife is absolutely exceptional in uh, processing wood and everything. It's got a C one hundred C one hundred carbon steel blade, which is a really it's it's a it's a good squeeze. It's a good steel, and uh, and uh, it holds an edge, a razor sharp edge, uh, very easy to bring back to a razor sharp edge, and uh, is is very dependable steel. Uh, won't chip uh, very, you know, won't chip to a certain degree and uh, has a really high, it's really hard. It's got a really high hardness scale. Uh, it's a 57 to 58 hardness scale 
which is really nice. And I'll talk a little bit more. I Obviously, I have a black coating on my actual knife. I'll talk a little bit more about that on the actual blade itself uh, in a little while, or a little bit. Um, so, uh, to be quite honest with you guys, uh, I use this knife for, for my primary bushcraft knife just because I know it's dependable. Um, a lot of people argue against that because a lot of bushcraft knives, a lot of people believe that bushcraft knives should be uh, full tang, you know, knives. And I'm not arguing that they shouldn't be. Um, they, you know, you could very well have a full tang bushcraft knife. Um, when I usually go bushcrafting, I'm usually walking long distances and I'm going to really remote locations to do, you know, to have fun and, and just really enjoy the outdoor wilderness experience. Um, and so I don't like hauling a ton of gear with me that weighs a lot. And anything I can do to subsidize, uh, uh, you know, ounces for pounds it really helps me in the long run. So this knife being in the four ounce range for as long as it is and the tasks that I can put it to really changes the game for me um, as far as uh, what I can do or what I can take, you know, and, and every time I, every time I go out, I usually either grab this knife or I grab my, my moral companion. Uh, and that's usually, that's usually something that I kind of consider when, especially when I'm doing a lot of outdoor activities. Um, even when I'm going on like a day hike or, and I, I'm just going to go out for the day and I pack a little bag. Um, I don't like taking a whole lot of stuff with me. I like to maximize you know, water and food, which are more important to me than having a consistent heavy duty knife uh, that I have to haul around. So I try to save as much weight as possible, but have still have something like a reliable system, like the more companion, or, I mean, the more robust. So, uh, or companion, I take, I take both. Um, that being said, I, I, uh, I really do enjoy this knife. Um, the, the actual handle of the knife feels really good. Um, in your hands, I have I have large hands, uh, and it fits it fits my hands really well. You know, you can really tell that uh, you can really tell that Morris spent a lot of time thinking about the handle of this knife. It is a lot different. Uh, it's got a larger belly or a larger amount of pro polypropylene down here on the bottom uh, that they've obviously put there for larger hands or to have to add uh, extra strength to the actual. Um, it's a three quarter stick tank, so they added. More polypropylene, I think, to subsidize for that thicker, uh, that thicker blade uh, that comes with it. And um, the thickness on the blade is uh, 3.2 millimeters thick, which is pretty thick. Um, you know, it's pretty thick for uh, for uh, for a knife. But what's really funny is, for as thick as the knife is, the stick tang with the stick tang and everything, it really lightens the load of this knife. And I think that's where the lightness comes in is with the stick tang. Um, and it's very secure. I've seen a lot of cutaways. People have actually cut the knife away, and I know that it's a three-quarter three-quarter tang, which for me is more than dependable for a knife. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I have not run into any problems or issues where, pe where, where I have personally broken knives or felt like the knife was going to fail in any way with it being a three-quarter inch tang. And I have, you know, a, fall, uh, a more of five five eleven, which is a smaller version. And I've thumb found that thing really, really, really hard trying to, not trying to break it, but really pushing its potential. And I still have yet to break that knife. And so this being the same kind of style where it's a three quarter tang, a three quarter inch tang, uh, stick tang, really, really, really excels in the job, or at least I feel. Uh, and if you disagree, you disagree. Um, but this is just my honest opinion of the knife. Uh, I really, really, really like the belly. That belly just adds a little bit more too to the hand. Uh, uh, or for me, and uh, it's nice because you can also use the Moras uh, because the three quarter inch stick, stick tang they leave a lot of polypropylene at the bottom. But it, I feel like it works really good as a hammer if you had to hammer it. Uh, I wouldn't honestly; it wouldn't be my go-to hammer, but it's good if you're in a pinch and you have to use it to, you know, uh, tap in a, a tent stake or maybe crush some nuts or something in a survival situation. It wouldn't be that; it would be a, a good, a decent pommel to have. Uh, on there. Um, let's see. Uh, the actual grip on the actual handle feels really good. It's nice and grippy. Uh, it, it, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like it, it's not like a craton or anything, but it, it feels like, a. you know, it feels like there's rubber there. And really I've used this with sweaty hands and it hasn't slipped out of my hand yet. Uh, I do always use a lanyard with most of my knives. As you've seen, I usually tap my own lanyard holes and that helps with just slip prevention. Uh, or, or just a backup on, on my backup, uh, you know, so I kind of like slip my fingers in there. If I have to do heavy duty cutting, 
tasks and I, and I am really worried about my hands slipping off, it does help. It does help a lot. I can do a lot of power cuts with this. The, the, the way that they angled the actual uh, uh, top of the knife where, where, the, uh, where the, finger, the finger guard is. Um, the finger guard is not obtrusive as some of the other models that they have. Uh, it's really nice. It does catch the fingers really well, so I don't feel like I am going to really slip up and cut my fingers off. Uh, but they've also done a good job at angling that uh, so you can most likely do power cuts with it. Or at least that's what I use mine for, is for doing serious power cuts uh, with wood. And it really excels that too. Uh, it's got a 27 degree, it's got a scanty grind, but it's also at a 27 degree uh, angle grind, uh, which is uh, which is a lot bigger of an angle than on the companion model uh, of knife, uh, it, which is obviously lesser in degree. Um, but even for that higher, a little bit higher degree, it still bites into the wood and really can really can destroy uh, and process wood uh, like nobody's business, or at least in my experience, it's been really, really, really uh, awesome. Uh, and so it's really fun knife to take out because there's really not a whole lot you can't cut with this knife. Uh, you know, it's it's really, really, really good. Um, the actual blade itself is made out of that C100 carbon steel and uh, is good. You know, it's a good steel. Um, it's very easy to maintain. In it's very easy to maintain a sharpness on these knives on these C100 uh, series, a carbon steel. Uh, but I really feel as if uh, you know, it just really has a high potential to rust, uh, especially the the C100. It's very comparable to that 1095 carbon steel that K Bar uses. Uh, or, or any of those other companies that use lower end steels, um, and it, which is not, it's not a bad steel. It's just, you know, it's not as dependable and it's, it's not as dependable in a situation where there's high moisture content. Um, if you're going to go into a wet environment, I would highly, highly recommend that you take a stainless steel knife or something that's more proven, uh, in, in wet environments. Um, when I usually go out camping or anything and I go on long distance trips, there is always a tendency where there's dew or, or it rains or there's a large amount of moisture. And I find that when I have taken my carbon steel knives out with me, they usually come back with a little bit of rust and I have to do a little bit more maintenance to them uh, to, to bring them back to where they once were. And that's something that really bothers me. And I finally realized that I should probably just upgrade and get like a stainless steel. So I know Mora offers this in that carbon steel, but what they really should do is they should offer this in a stainless steel. Uh, in that 12C26 or 12, uh, 12C27 uh, Sandvik stainless steel, that would be really cool. I would buy this knife in a heartbeat if it were in a stainless steel. You guys agree? I don't know. Doesn't matter. But uh, really, I feel like that would vastly improve this knife and and really push it into a whole new category where it can be competing with other knives. Uh, uh, but I mean, let's go back to the the let's go back to the actual blade itself. So I did a I did a I did a boiled vinegar patina. Uh, I brought uh, vinegar to a boil, uh, you know, to a low boil. Then I took the knife, or I took the took the vinegar, I put it in a container uh, that would not melt or anything, like a glass container. And then I, I slowly and carefully put the knife inside the glass container uh, and let it rest, um, let it rest kind of tilted and let the actual vinegar actually eat away, or not eat away, it changed the, it does the chemical composition to the actual blade itself, turning it, uh, turning the outside black. Um, what that really is, is a, it's ferrous oxide, and ferrous, ferrous oxide is, uh, it basically, it's, it's, it basically forms this black, I want to call it black rust, uh, but it's like a black outside coating that's supposed to help prevent uh, ferric oxide from actually forming. Ferric oxide is the red rust, so it's it's iron oxide, um, and that basically it, it's the the ferrous oxide is supposed to help prevent ferric oxide from forming on the blade. And since I've had this blade, I really have realized that. Uh, and since I did that, I did this to the blade um, at least nine or uh, nine or ten months ago. And um, since I've done it, uh, I, I have really noticed that it has actually improved. Uh, the rust resistance of the knife. Uh, I have not really taken this knife and really put it through the rigors of putting it in a high content, high moisture content environment. Um, but I have not seen a whole lot of rust form on this knife as of since I put the actual, um, 
the actual vinegar uh, on 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 the blade or the the actual uh, ferrous oxide on the blade. So um, it would be I'll be really curious to see how it does over time, and I'll probably probably update the review. I may actually put this. I may actually, you know, put this in a high moisture content environment or take it out with me and try and see if I can get it to rust and what the limitations are on the rust or rusting capabilities of the actual blade. Uh, in all my research before I actually did this coating, I did a ton of research and I could not find anybody that, that actually said, oh, it does not help, period, or oh, it does help, period. Uh, there's a lot of people who flip flop back and forth about it working and not working and and honestly I, I think I think I might just go ahead and try it and see if it really does help. I know that the actual Moro company does do their blades where they oxidize the blades or they're in it during production and I'm not sure if that oxidization uh, is better or not um, but it would be nice to kind of see them try to do the same with these knives um, seeing as how you know it's a high carbon content blade it's really thick and most people buy these to do outdoor activities or, you know, at least in my experience, a lot of the people that buy these use them for outdoor activities. So it would be interesting to see if Mora could improve this whole model uh, and most likely not improve anything other than putting a nice lanyard hole and maybe changing the blade steel or adding some sort of preventative, uh, maybe even a, ti a titanium nitrite coating over the entire blade to help with rust resistance. Um, that would be something that I would really like to see uh, Mora do, and I really feel like that would vastly improve the whole, uh, you know, the whole production of their entire knife line. Uh, you know, and I understand that it would increase the price, and I would no longer have a thirteen or fifteen dollar knife. I would have a twenty-five, thirty dollar knife. But you know, if I know that it's a dependable, reliable knife, and I want to pay a little bit more money to have a dependable, reliable bushcraft knife, I'll pay the money for it. You know. Pro, uh, supply and demand. So, uh, really, uh, I feel like this is a great blade to have. I really feel like everybody should add this to their their uh, knife collection. It's a really great knife. Uh, if I had to pick up a knife though, and I had to, and I had to have only one knife with me for the rest of my life, <laughs> that would never happen. But it'd be really funny. I'm gonna end up going with the Sandvik, uh, the Sandvik steel uh, companion over over the carbon steel, just because I know it's lower maintenance. Um, it is a little bit harder to sharpen, but it does. It's still as razor sharp as as the as the uh, the C100 carbon, and I, I just feel as if uh, both these knives they to me they feel the same weight, and weight is still an issue. And I, I really I'm going to end up choosing this knife over this knife just because of the dependency and reliability uh, in in condition conditioned weather. So. That's just my honest opinion, and uh, that's just my thoughts on everything. If you guys differ, or if you have different thoughts on it, you can let me know. Uh, I'm not arguing this is a bad knife. I think it's a great knife. I think everybody should get one. I'm just there are a few improvements that I would have made to the knife that would have made it a lot better, or in my opinion, make it better. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean there it is, and uh, that's that's all I've got to say. It's a fun knife, razor sharp, easy to easy to take care of, easy to maintain. Uh, with a little bit of with a little bit of modification, it it went a long way for me, and it's still one of my favorite knives. So there you have it. If you guys have any more comments, uh, you can comment back, or if you guys want to hear me talk more about other things, let me know, and you can make suggestions, and I'd be more than willing to go out and see if I can obtain some gear or equipment. Uh, but other than that, you guys stay safe out there and don't cut yourselves. All right, Gearholics signing out.